go. Oh, well, hello, everybody. Marty and Misty here from Podjam TV with another edition of Podjam TV Live. Um, it's been a while since we've uh, been live with everybody, so uh, we're going to be a little more consistent, 8.30 every Sunday. And uh, today, we have a really special guest. Yes, we do. Um, one of our and, friends from many years. Yeah, online. And, yeah and we met her um, last did we, December. Yeah, December down in... Uh, yeah, she was so kind enough to go and visit us yeah. at Disney World. Yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, we're going to choose Michelle Megan, or, or Manjin, I'm sorry. Manjin. Oh, boy. I knew okay. I was going to screw that. I knew I was going to screw that up, Michelle. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, and um, Michelle is a virtual assistant. Yes. And uh, it's great that we have her tonight because, like, for me, I when I started out and I keep on hearing about virtual assistant and people keep on talking about hiring a virtual assistant, but I never really knew what a virtual assistant. Does. Right. It's like, what are they like? Uh, virtual? They're not real, or yeah. I what, think it's what a, do they do? I right? think it's kind of a big mystery. Yeah. Exactly. So, Michelle. Plus, uh, for business owners, I absolutely. Think. Yeah, business. this is very valuable. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, we're gonna. Uh, what is basically what is a virtual assistant? And uh, Michelle particularly has a great story to tell. I think. And the, and for those who are watching us now, please use uh, hashtag PTV Live to ask your questions on Twitter. Okay, Michelle. Uh, I want you to tell us a little bit about first of all, what is a virtual assistant, and kind of tell us about your story, how you got started, and I, I think you have a rather unique story. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> um, as far as what a virtual assistant is, I, my friend Alex Greenwood, which you both know, he told me the best way to describe it, and of course he's in PR. Um, someone uh, who helps business owners save time. So. That is very simplistic terms, I guess you could say, as far as what a virtual assistant is. But basically, we're a freelancer of sorts, a business owner who helps relieve pain points for business owners, the pressure points they have. As far as how I got started, I read a book when I was in London visiting a friend, and it was a fiction book. And the heroine in the story, she was a virtual assistant. I didn't know at the time if that was made up for the purposes of the book or <laughs> not. When I got back to the U.S., I did some research and found out that, indeed, it really is an industry. And at the time, I was driving 100 miles one way to work. And after a really, really crazy, crazy winter, 2007-2008 in Wisconsin, in March, I walked into my boss's office and I said, hey, you have to replace me by November before the next snowfall <laughs> and probably in about July I decided that I really didn't want to work for someone else and therefore decided I was going to give this virtual assistant thing a try and see where it led. Nice. Excellent. Uh, yeah, that's quite a, I mean, uh, 100 miles each way to work? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I did that for, I did that for three and a half years. Wow. Wow. That's not, I mean, I think my commute, I mean, I only drive like uh, 10, 12 miles each way. I think the longest commute I ever had was uh, maybe a half hour. Uh, so I can't imagine doing that. That's crazy. And also, when uh, you lived up in Wisconsin, so the Wisconsin winters, you had to drive through all the snow and all mm -hmm. that. Yeah, we had a 100-year record of snowfall that year. And <laughs> that was the uh, proverbial straw that broke the camel's back. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, my goodness. So, uh, from there, um, how was it to get started? What's, what are some of the challenges that you faced just getting started? Because you kind of just uh, started from scratch, right? Yeah, I I did so many things. You know how they say, like, the school of hard knocks? I have went there. I had mm -hmm. proudly wear my, <laughs> you know, cap and tassel. <laughs> <laughs> um, challenges. At the time, I was making really, really good money. Um, at the company I was at and I should have probably saved some money before I started but I have this um, I still sadly own the property but I have like a land contract on it now I have this property that was built in 1937 and the thing just if you've ever seen the movie Money Pit basically mm -hmm. that's what my property is 
And so it just was sucking the money out of oh my, my wallet, out of everything I had saved. And so I bravely decided I was going to give this business thing a try. And I think I was overly optimistic mm -hmm. um, as to how easy it would be to get clients. Like that part I totally underestimated. And hindsight, I probably should have maybe done a little bit of transitioning between full-time employee to full-time business owner. But I literally like one day I'm working and I gave myself about three days of woohoo, like I'm not working anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and then said, oh, okay, like now I'm really going to get down to work on this business stuff. So in hindsight, I probably would have done some things differently because I totally underestimated the whole getting the clients thing. So that was definitely a challenge starting up. Okay. Um, before we get into uh, what it was like your first year and, and kind of taking you to where you are today, um, why don't you go through, you know, what are some of the things a virtual assistant can do for a business owner or, yeah. or individual? Um, maybe a better question is what they can't do. Ah, okay. Uh, I, <laughs> I, okay, so here's just kind of some examples of things I do for different people. Um, there's, of course, like the bookkeeping, which is a little bit more higher skilled um, type service. There's a lot of newsletters, so people who use Aweber. Constant Contact, MailChimp, um, do that type of thing. There's social media virtual assistants. There's virtual paralegals. Um, there's ones that specialize just with real estate. So almost anything you can think of, like probably not everything can be done by a virtual assistant. Some things you really do need, you know, quote unquote person. Or, or be right there so, physically, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And I have like a couple of girls who help me, and I know this is going to sound like funny, but my business coach has me delegating five things a day. And the other week, one of the things I did is I scanned the bottled water delivery schedule. I emailed it to the girl and said, hey, log into my Google Calendar and put all the water delivery days <laughs> on my calendar. Because like, I need to know when the water guy's coming so I can make sure I have my empty bottles out. Mm -hmm. But do I need to do that task myself? Nope. Like with a scanner and email, someone else took care of it for me. Nice. So, so you actually use a virtual assistant yourself? I actually have three, well actually I have like four or five girls that help with different things. Um, and some of them, like one does a lot of stuff with WordPress. When I have her help um, print and mail renewal letters for one of my clients. So yeah, I do have a couple that I use for some client stuff, and then, of course, this whole five-a-day plan with Charlie, you know, of my own things, too. Mm -hmm. So what you're basically saying is, like, um, it's good to hire uh, a virtual assistant to do particular services for you. Um, it can either be, can you say it's, it can be general, or it's, should it be, like, specialized task? Because I, I think because there's a, the problem of... Some people I've heard is that, oh, I'll get one virtual assistant to do everything for me. What, yeah, and what's your opinion in that? I don't know. Like, I personally think, I understand, like, why it's nice to have just one person. You have one point of contact, one personality. So for some people, that might work. But I think it's almost better in some aspects that you are spreading your risk out. So you have one person who you know, can fill in maybe if something goes wrong or someone goes out of town. Because theoretically, we should probably take vacation ourselves. Mm -hmm. So at some point, you know, or maybe we're sick. So there's definitely an advantage to having, you know, multiple people on hand. And then it also allows some people to be really, really good at one thing, but not really, really good at a lot of things. Yep. Yeah, I would think that uh, part of it is uh, knowing yeah, yeah, who can fit what role for your own clients. So if it's they come to you with a particular task and you might not be well-versed or, or not skilled in that area, but you know one or two other people that are, I guess you can work with them as subcontractors, that type of arrangement? Yep, or even sometimes even just a straight-up referral arrangement, you know, to say, hey, Misty, you need someone who knows Infusionsoft? I don't here you can work directly with Somebody. you know whoever it is that does work with it. 
Okay. Um, and we were talking uh, yesterday, uh, kind of getting a sense of what your story was about. And uh, I'm just fascinated with, with your whole story. I, I think it's uh, you start from, from square one and to, to today, and you know, you're, you're fairly successful. Um, but that first year wasn't necessarily the best. <laughs> so, I mean, no. kind of tell us about some of the challenges you encountered and, you know, kind of how tough that was and, and what got you through it to today. Now, you've been, you've been, you've had your business now for how long? Um, December was four years. Okay. And so, uh, yeah, so, so kind of tell us about that, kind of that first year or, or when you first started out um, because I, you know it wasn't like you, know, you are now where you're where you're quite successful what are the, what were some of the challenges that you faced um, well the first year um, as I mentioned I had went from making decent money um, well really good money <laughs> to my first year I want to say my gross income was right around 20 some thousand mm -hmm. my website took five grand of that 20,000 wow. of course I still had the mortgage to pay on the property that my <laughs> money pit back in Wisconsin <laughs> and I have my son who I have to keep you know clothed and fed and all that fun stuff <laughs> and so I started December of 2008 um, in uh, I want to say January of well November of 2009 Jordan like randomly started throwing up for like no reason at all oh. so at that time was when I really realized, like, hey, I'm really fortunate that I do this because if I were driving 100 miles one way and when the school's calling and saying, come pick up your kid, like, you can't get there, you know, in a matter of minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> it turned out Jordan was diagnosed with liver disease. So in the process of trying to build my business and this property, like, sucking the life out of me, all of a sudden, I have this kid who needs to go to specialist appointments and all that fun stuff. Um, so that in itself was one of those extra, wow, you know, like, mm -hmm. how much do I really, like, have to, like, <laughs> deal with? <laughs> but because I had, I used to, like, I still, like, say this, and, and it's not really a joke. I joke around about it, but I always had more time than money. And because mm -hmm. I had more time than money in the early days, that's when I really became just incredibly intrigued by Twitter. And so I sat out on this whole, I realized very early on when I lived in Wisconsin and a law firm out of New Orleans contacted me and asked if we could talk about their bookkeeping. And I realized suddenly, wow, there's value to Twitter because this opens up my doors to the, this brings the virtual into what I do. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I became very, intrigued and set out to learn everything I possibly could and because I had so much time back then I was able to start building those relationships that have paid off for me today so I had absolutely no money back then <laughs> <laughs> and I have debt to still prove it <laughs> <laughs> but but, I, but but it's interesting you mentioned um, building relationships and building networks um, you know I've always believed that that's one of your strongest assets that you can have and, and you mentioned Twitter um, I would imagine your business like you said that's invaluable you know the the tools that you have to network not only I mean back in the day it was just your local area and whatever your physical location was and you had a very finite area that you could network now it's really global and I would think in your business that's really that that's really true yeah because even out of all the clients I have I have one that I got when I was in Wisconsin. He's my very first client. I still work with him. He's local in Wisconsin. He's referred me to another Wisconsin business, but I've never actually met them, so that was a word of mouth referral. But other than that, I have clients all across the United States. Um, Mountain Standard is like Denver's the furthest to the west. Mm -hmm. And that time difference sometimes proves to be a little bit challenging because he Things like, oh, Michelle's available till five, but he forgets like five <laughs> Eastern. <laughs> We're three hours, a couple hours ahead of him. But I have a client in Canada as well, and all of this really just became possible because of Twitter. And it, I'm not saying it can't be done with Facebook or LinkedIn. It can probably be done 
anywhere you spend your time building relationships. And even if you just pick one and do one really, really good, mm -hmm. like I'm one of those, you know, poster childs for what can happen, like really mm -hmm. cool things. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, do you have any, I don't know if we have any questions from uh, oh. the Twitterverse. I am uh, But anyways, um, uh, just getting into uh, uh, a little bit more about the mechanics of virtual assistants, uh, is there a, um, a, do you have any tips or advice uh, for those that may want to get into that field? I mean, we're just coming out of this bad, very bad recession, and uh, I think a lot of people are looking at kind of taking stock of where they're at and maybe want to switch careers or maybe want to dip their toe into being an entrepreneur and, and maybe this is an area that they want to tackle. You know, you're successful now, and are there any tips or advice that you can give people that may want to invest, investigate starting their own virtual assistant business? Um, personally, in my case, I had, you know, the very well-meaning friends who would say, this is the absolute worst time to start a business because the economy sucks. And what I always said was, you're right, the economy does suck. So if I can make it now, like, <laughs> imagine what's going to be possible for me when the economy is good like, right. <laughs> and honestly like when the economy is bad that's the worst time to or that's the best time to start a business oh I totally because agree if it works for you then when everything settles and the dust is clear and people have like money to spend like then there's just money for the taking <laughs> you know exactly. yeah I guess I guess it's a matter of uh, you use this time where I think a lot of people think that it's the worst time so maybe your competition is not as great as it would be in better times. So you have a chance to kind of get started and get it going and, and build your business because it's not. It certainly doesn't happen overnight. I would think. No, no, it definitely doesn't happen overnight. If I were to like, of course, like building relationships. If you're thinking about doing it, like now's the time to start building the relationships. Honestly, you can't start building relationships too soon because they'll come in handy for something or other. You know, because everything. You know, give and take, you know, oh, absolutely. with whatever the case, you know, may be. Um, so building the relationships regardless is a really great thing to start at any point. But if you're looking more specifically on being a virtual assistant, I would say start getting involved in forums, start reading what you can, figure out yourself and what you do really, really well. And, you know, maybe just look around and see what type of people are out there that you could possibly help because there's so much to learn about mm -hmm. it that even all this time later like I'm still learning things every day sometimes <laughs> <laughs> oh I could I could imagine uh, it's got to be uh, it had to be quite a journey uh, up to this point um, do you want to ask the next question yeah um, we know there are a lot of people who you know want to start um, to become a, a virtual assistant, do you know any resource or a place where they can go to get more information? Um, the virtual assistant forums are a really, really great place. One, it's a very, very supportive community that's there. Any question you can possibly think of has probably been asked within the forum, but then of course you can always ask your own. And with it being dedicated for virtual assistants, and everyone having a little bit different way in which they run their business, it's really, really great for getting multiple perspectives on the same issue. And help sometimes too, you know, how do I do X, Y, Z? And there's always someone out there like willing to answer the question. So the Virtual Assistant Forums is a really fantastic place to start off if you're just getting started or have been in it for a while. Plus, I know you're um, doing some um, teaching. Um, you have, you're offering classes. Yes. Um, starting Tuesday, February 12th, nice. I am teaching a six-week online class using the Virtual Assistant Forums ebook as the guide, essentially, for the class. So we're limiting it to 10 students. So in a sense, it's not quite one-on-one -on -one coaching, but the group isn't so large that it gets unmanageable and where people still have an opportunity to get some guidance on specific issues that they have. 
Excellent. And for our audience, um, <clears throat> we will be posting the links to the resources that um, Michelle has given us mm -hmm. on the show notes. Yeah, and I believe, uh, Michelle, there's a uh, free ebook that people can download. Yeah, that is specifically for business owners who are looking to maybe start working with a virtual assistant or maybe even if they have worked with one in the past, it basically is a little bit of a guide. It's 48 pages. Um, virtual Assistantville typically sell, sells it for $4.95, but she said, hey, I'd love to like <laughs> get this into the hands of Marty and Missy's people. They can have it for free for two weeks. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, excellent. Now, now we're, and we'll, we'll obviously put that link in, in the notes um, uh, with this video. Uh, what's the link uh, that they can go to? Um, it's actually a really, really long link. I think okay. it's uh, a bitly. <laughs> we'll, we'll, so, folks, if you're interested in that ebook on virtual assistants, we will put it in the notes uh, below this video, and uh, it'll be available to everybody. Um, I guess that's that's all the questions that we have for absolutely. today. Absolutely. Uh -huh. um, well, Michelle, it was great to have you with us, um, and uh, we I think we learned a lot about more about virtual assistants. Uh, any last piece of advice or anything that you want to leave the audience with as far as um, if, uh, I, guess, I guess I'll approach this two ways. Uh, one, if people are looking for a virtual assistant, uh, what is the best, you know, way to kind of vet them and, and what are you going to look for? And two, if people want to get into the business, um, what, I guess what's the top piece of advice that you would give them? And then just we do want to know where, to, where we can, people can find you as well. Got it. So your first question, um, if you're a business owner looking to maybe hire a virtual assistant, um, download the ebook that will be available. But virtualassistantville.com, they have a platform where you can either search based on specific topics if you're looking for someone, for example, to do bookkeeping. Um, and then it also has an opportunity where you can submit an RFP and then the virtual assistants who are members of that site can submit their information to you in interest of a job. I'm calling it a job posting, but we all know it's not really a job. <laughs> a project. How about we call it that? There you <laughs> go. <Or> posting. <laughs> so, and then Virtual Assistant Forums also has a place for business owners as well. But if you're a business owner, sometimes the best place to start is with your friends. Ask your friends if they work with someone, what type of task that person does for them, what do they think of that person. And so, that's also another great place to start asking your friends. If you're a virtual assistant um, looking to get started, um, Tess and I are actually doing a free call this Thursday. Um, with Each of us will be sharing our top five things I wish I knew before I started, which you've got a couple of them here tonight, little nuggets. <laughs> Very <laughs> good nuggets. <laughs> and then and there'll be a, there, there's, is there a link for that, or is that something? Uh, I actually do have a, I do have a, on my blog, which okay. I'll, send you that link. Yes, um, please. Um, and there's no registration required. It's free to call the, free to call in, you know, unless you have to pay long distance. Um, but other than that, it'll be lots of fun, I'm sure, with the two of us. Plus <laughs> <and> I. <laughs> Although we're both on the shy side, so we'll see. <laughs> I don't know. You don't seem shy to me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you, <mean>. <laughs> <laughs> you get here. And, um, and where can people uh, find you if they want to know more about Michelle Mangin? Um, of course, my favorite place to hang out on social media is Twitter. Um, so at M M A N G E N at M Mangin, and from there I have my blog, which I'm trying to be a little bit more consistent about. I think the two of you, after yesterday, I'm inspired to try this whole video thing. <laughs> at some point. <laughs> Inspiration yeah, you do, all around. You do great, Michelle. I think you'd be great on video. You do. You're very relaxed and uh, you communicate well, and I think people really get a lot out of it. So, uh, okay, um, Michelle, thank you very much for uh, being on with us on Podjam TV Live. Follow uh, Michelle on Twitter. So, yeah, you know, we learn a lot from a her every day. Yeah, M M A N G E N. <laughs> um, and uh, she's terrific. Uh, we've known her for years on Twitter. Finally got to meet in person this past uh, December. And uh, Michelle, I, we'd love to have you back if you would come back here. Uh, hopefully, uh, sometime uh, in the future on Podium TV Live, we'd love to continue this discussion. Absolutely, and thank you so much for having me. Excellent. Uh, anything else, Misty? 
Yeah, um, this uh, broadcast will also be available this week on iTunes on uh, our new podcast. That's right. So watch out for that. Yeah, we'll, new we'll audio sh- podcast. Mm-hmm. We'll share it on Twitter mm-hmm. um, when it's ready, and also we'll put a link on our website. Absolutely. All right, everyone. Uh, thanks. Wait, I oh, I'm sorry. One of my oh, that's right. Projects. Oh, we got a new project. That's right. Mm-hmm. Um, please, if you have friends who like pets and you want a customized drawing of your pet, whether it be a dog, cat, or even a parrot. Yeah, it works, right? Yeah, go to Furry Sketches, and we will do the drawings for you. Uh, give us uh, three to five business days, and we'll send a digital art of your pet. And that's furrysketches.com. Um, F-U-R-R-Y-S-K-E-T-C-H-E-S.com. Uh, and check out Misty has a nice portfolio there. And uh, so, yeah, absolutely. Uh, mm-hmm. That's brand new for us. I saw that what you did yesterday on Facebook. I was like, oh, wow. Well, you saw my comment. I'm like, wow. Oh, yeah. That's what I did. So real. <laughs> that came out all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're excited. I know, I mean, Misty, I know you're excited as well. Very excited. Uh, I think that does it, right? Mm-hmm. And then come back on, on Sunday. Um, we have a very special treat for everybody since it's Valentine's week. That's right. A special Pod Gen TV Live. Mm-hmm. All about what? All about, All about love, and love and social media. Right. We have you, Carly Peerless, and Mark Davidson. Yes. So that's gonna... next Sunday. Ooh. Yeah. That's... See, Michelle, you might you might want to tune in for that one. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> Mark on Facebook. There you go. Exactly. Uh, Yukari, Mark, uh, they're terrific, and mm-hmm. uh, they have a very similar story um, to us as yes. far as our you know kind of online love story. So, so that's that's gonna that's gonna be interesting. Yeah. So that's next Sunday, eight thirty p.m. Eastern, Eastern time. time. Yep. So it's love and social media. Next Sunday. Okay. I, I think that it. does it for this week. Uh, Podgem TV Live. Uh, please join us next week, Sunday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern and every Sunday. Uh, we will see you next time. <laughs>